welcome to jasonnewland.com. I'll move this around a little bit. Oh, that's better. Uh, my name is Jason Newland, and this is Let Me Bore You to Sleep. And I hope you can see this. I'm trying to get the microphone closer to my mouth so that the volume's a bit louder. I'm not sure if it's working or not, but hey, it's, it's worth a try, isn't it? It's worth giving it a go. I hope, hopefully the microphone's working, but whether it's, you know, I don't want to have it hanging from my, I suppose I could attach it to my beard, but that would just be weird, a weird beard. So, uh, this is, I don't know what number this is to let me bore you to sleep, but it's 49 or something. And uh, I did, I started to do one yesterday on Facebook live, uh, a live let me bore you to sleep. It turned out to be more of a chat with the people online. So... This t-shirt's really creasy, creaky, creasy. Um, so I'm gonna discount that as being a uh, let me bore you to sleep session. So this is a real, a real let me bore you to sleep one. So before I start, I wanted to say thank you to those of you that have sent me messages on YouTube, I need to reply to some of them actually, and also on Facebook, and just to say thank you. I had some really, really kind um, messages over the last few days, so it's, it's heartwarming, you know, it's nice. I don't, I don't think I, I kind of need to be constantly told that I'm doing good and I'm doing okay and I'm doing what I'm doing is worthwhile but it is nice to hear it um, yeah so the other things before I start what is it I've got an itchy left eye I'm trying to itch it without touching it itch it scratch it that's it uh, I've no longer got a laptop, I've no longer got a podcast. These things will change in time. Um, but as far as I'm aware, my stuff's still on Spotify because when they take the podcast, Spotify actually download the sessions and they keep them on there. As far as I'm aware, that still happens. So, um, my website, jasonnewland.com, is still got all my back catalogue on there as well. So you can download all the videos and all the MP3s free. And the YouTube channel's got pretty much all of my videos from the past on there. Uh, and present ones as well. I was going to say, and future ones, but kind of future ones yet, but there will be, f you know. This will be on there when it's finished. Hmm. The good thing about doing live sessions is they upload pretty much instantly. They're kind of uploading as you record, as you do them. Recording this on the iPhone means I have to upload it afterwards and it takes about an hour. So it's quite a what a process. Most of my Let Me Bore You To Sleep sessions are on MP3 and as I said they're available on my website. The There's only a few actually, oh I've got an itchy back now, only a few on video. So if you want to listen to some of the, some of the earlier work of the JJ, of the, the Mr. Newland, 
you can do. So as usual, I will say only listen to this or watch this when you can safely close your eyes. And I think that fits quite well with the fact that this is a sleepy, sleepy weepy session. It's, a, it's supposed to be boring. That's what I like about this is because no one can insult me by telling me that it's boring. Because it's supposed to be. See that little, that, that smile of pride. I don't really have any pride, but on this one, it's like, yeah, kind of covered all the angles. Even when I'm talking about something that I'm interested in. You know what, you know, it's still boring to other people, so it's good. So I suppose what I could talk about is hypnosis. I could talk about my little journey into hypnosis today. So it's a story um, some of it might be true, some of it might be made up, I'm not sure. The thing is with memories, they're not always 100% correct, you know, uh, even psychologists will tell you that we can't always be that reliant. And I've noticed that actually is, i tell you what, I've always been pretty not good, but I can remember years, like I've got these little, if you think of like a, a laptop, you know, where you bookmark stuff, I kind of got in my brain bookmarked certain years for specific things that may have happened. And sometimes within those years, I've even got the month as well. Probably not the day, I don't go that in depth because that would be a little bit obsessive possibly. But generally for the month, I might remember what I was wearing, I might not, probably not. But there was a time when I just pretty much wore the same things all the time. I kind of still do really, not the same things as then because I can't fit into those clothes anymore. And Andre's just done a wee on the carpet. And I'll tell you why that isn't a wonderful thing. Because I've just cleaned the carpet, that part of the carpet. So it's a bit wet. And I put some paper down. So, because, you know, I left it to dry and he did a poo on there. So I had to clean that up. And then I put some paper down, and now he's he's avoided the paper altogether, and just gone on the car. So basically, he's decided to go to the toilet on the bit of carpet that's not been cleaned. So I suppose you could look at it different ways. Or it's nice of him not to go on the carpet that's clean, but then there's paper on top of that bit of the carpet. Uh, it's hard to get angry at him though because he's so cute even when he's being naughty and he is naughty sometimes you might think oh he's not he's just doing he's I think some people think um because he's a ferret or he's a polecat slash ferret it, like that he's like a, a gerbil or like a little mouse like something you keep in a cage and it doesn't you know nice to look at but don't do anything you know maybe but he's not he's really um, he interacts with me he communicates with me and he's you know he's very clever and he knows what he wants to do and he's very stubborn and you know, when I take him out for a walk, I know when he wants me to carry him, he'll go like that on my legs, both his paws on my leg, because he wants me to carry him, pick him up. 
or he'll just sometimes like today I took him out because my friend knocked on my door and said do you want to go for a walk and I said I'm not a dog and he said I know you're not so that kind of it was pretty attempted humour on my part it didn't really fit it didn't work do you want to go for a walk oh, I don't want to go for a walk but I did I did and I went I took Andre and we were crossing the road and I noticed that the lead was heavy and basically I was dragging him. He went on strike. He just goes on strike, he's like, refuses to move. So he was, couldn't even be bothered to walk enough to get in front of me to put his paws on my leg for me to carry him. He just went like that and just put his whole body flat on the floor, refused to move. So I carried him for about ten minutes. I don't mind carrying him because he's if he was a you know if he was a crocodile then it'd be it'd be more difficult because they're heavy. I imagine they look heavy unless they're just full of air. Mind you, they wouldn't be full of air, would they? Imagine an inflatable crocodile. I mean, the slightest move out of the, you know, those teeth, and they just go pop. So yeah, it wouldn't be any good. So I, he's, he's only little, he's only, he's only, I don't know how much, I've never weighed him. You know, I don't have scales myself. Um, and the only scales I have really that I go on is at the doctor's surgery. Every now and then, whenever I go to a doctor's surgery, I'll kind of think, oh, can I, can I just weigh myself? Can we just see what kind of weight? I kind of, I'm always, at the moment, I'm, last time I got weighed, I was just under 15 stone. I know that I put on weight since then, so I'm probably, I'm probably around 15 and a half, maybe, I don't know, over 15 anyway. But it's always good to sort of check, have a little check you know, to see kind of what the weight is. Sometimes I've been 14 and a half stone. Before I moved to, to this town, I was averaging 13 and a half, pretty much all the time. And even then I was overweight, pretty much. And then I realized that, you know, it's like, now that, oh, I wish, I don't wish I was that weight. I don't like have big, um, I don't lay in bed thinking about it. Oh, there's no lamentation going on. Oh, I wish I was 13 and a half stone. But I, I did lose some weight though last year for a bit. Got a little bit slimmer. So I've got the kind of body that's, I don't like that that term, it's a very political term that was used once and then suddenly, it's about like four or five years ago and then suddenly every politician is using it. But I use it in this, this sentence, uh, my body's not fit for purpose, perhaps. But it is quite, um, flexible in the sense of if I do exercise I can usually sort of slim down a bit when I was doing boxing back in what, 2009 I slimmed down but I didn't necessarily lose weight but I slimmed down so my stomach was slimmer but I was more muscular and I was doing weights, I had a punch bag in the garden. and I miss my punch bag. I've had a few of them over the years. The first punch bag I got was when I was 13, I think. I had two punch bags at the bottom of the garden. So my dad had this, like it was a studio um, building that he had. And he had it as an office by, he let me have part of it as a gym. 
So you put two bags, so I had a, there's this army bag, you know, like a kit bag that I have in, in the army. So I had that full of rags and stuff like that. So it was a light bag. And then I had a, uh, an actual, I bought a punch bag, a bigger one that we had full of sand. And they were both hanging up. I think I might have, there might be one hook or there might be two hooks. I think there might have just been one hook and I alternated so I took one off and took the other one, put the other one on. But it was like a swivel hook so you used to, so it wasn't restricted and it could turn around and everything. Um, so I used to have a lot of fun with that, I used to love punch bag. The best fun ever. It's, it's amazing. Um, so There was a reason for me mentioning that punch bag. I might have got off topic a little bit. It's unlike me. So yeah, so I, yeah, the punch bag. I remember one day the punch bag said to me, "Oh, I suppose you could do some hypnosis, could you?" And I said, "What's that?" He said, "Oh," and the punch bag handed me a book, Introduction to Hypnosis, and that's how it all started. No, it's not. So the hypnosis, I think I really, I got into, I was very into Buddhism as a younger man, younger man, like uh, the age of 22, I'd say, really got into reading Zen books, like the classic or Zen classic Zen books, which led me to Buddhism meditation. So I had a nice little collection. But I was also into poetry as well. And um, particularly the beat generation poets which then led me to reading books by Kerouac, On the Road, uh, Ginsberg, uh, who else? There was various different writers. Um, and that then led me, because I used to go into the bookshops, it used to be pretty much, it's kind of like a hobby, uh, reading books, collecting books, going to the bookstore, checking out books because um, what I would do I'd read a book and then I'd look at the glossary or the bibliography or whatever you want to call it at the end and maybe during the book it's mentioned another book for example uh, I got into Charles Bukowski and he was some of the books that he authors that he liked I started buying their books as well so it was, what was it, Into the Night? Um, I forget the author of that. There was a French author. And so I read you know, various books, Kant, um, Dovoskeski, I can't say the name. Uh, the Castle, was it The Idiot? The, yeah. So it's, yeah, it's quite a few different books I quite like. I like the weirder sort of books. The the books with dialogue, but not just a, a interesting conversation, maybe an unusual conversation. I quite like that. So I, I haven't read any of that stuff for years. Perhaps I could do with doing that again. Um, yeah, filling myself up a little bit more with some of that stuff. I do have uh, recently, well, probably a couple of years back, I bought a bunch of uh, Charles Bukowski books. 
So the I've not read the, well, I've already read them though, that's the thing. I've read pretty much all of his books, including the poetry ones as well. So I had I had a big collection of his books. So that's the thing, is like I've read Post Office probably three or four times. Um so it's necessarily want to read it again you know I think that's why I I'm not comparing myself to Charles Bukowski here but why I quite like the idea of doing lots of different things not so I've not just done one recording for relaxation one recording for chronic pain one recording for sleep I've done lots and lots of different recordings for the same issues and because I quite like the having something a bit different yet the same but different you know um, although I do see the value in having the same session and listening to the same session for maybe a month but maybe not forever, you know? I used to, back in December 1999, I stopped smoking. And I listened to this, I bought this tape, which was a visualization relaxation session and there was some soft music and I think it was something Mer Mer Merrifield or the, the lady she's an American lady and she's had a beautiful voice and soft and gentle and the whole tape was her just guiding me through a forest and I listened to it twice a day in the morning and in the evening and I absolutely loved it and it helped me to learn to relax a bit more and it was really useful it had nothing to do with smoking it wasn't a stop smoking session it was just a relaxing session and I did self hypnosis for the smoking and uh, although I really loved listening to it 20 years later 19 years later I don't think I'd still want to be listening to it every morning and every evening um, I'd want to listen to something different eventually it's a, so that's part of the reason why I do these I'm not comparing myself to her I'm just saying that's why I like to do more choice offer more choice more variety but at the same time still be offering the same kind of thing you know the same but then it's not all the same thing though is it because these let me bore you to sleep sessions are just boring they're just that's it it's me talking for 40 minutes or 50 minutes or 52 minutes or 53 minutes or 54 minutes Sometimes 56 minutes, I've done some for 57, 58, 59. Yeah, some over an hour, I've done some for over an hour, hour and four minutes sometimes. And I don't think I've ever gone over an hour and ten, but I might have done. And so, yeah, I'm not sure. This, if, yeah, I might have done. But I used to really enjoy reading those books. And I think the, once I moved on from the beat generation, because that was more like 40s, 50s, 60s era. And Charles Bukowski was more, well, he was still that era, but he, he was more, 
think he probably got more famous, more well done, well known, more in like the eighties, seventies and eighties. And so I've listened to some of his live stuff as well. So he used to, uh, I used to own some tapes and some CDs and stuff of him doing like reading his poetry in front of. I think he used to go to universities around America and do poetry readings and get paid for doing it. And I think what he used to do is just sit at a table at the front and just get drunk whilst reading his poems. And he also made recordings as well where he'd, I think he would have just read the poems at home or some home recordings so I had those too and I think there's something different if you from reading the poem on the paper to re listening to him or to the person that wrote the poem reading it especially if they were to explain what the poem's about or how the poem came about or what the purpose was or maybe what influenced it or where they were at the time of writing that particular poem but then reading it without that information can also have a different effect because then I would probably read the poem and attach it to myself you know connect it to my life and um, which could be you know therapeutic or useful or or you know or not depending so I suppose it's nice to have both versions but you know sometimes if I read a poem by somebody and I know their voice I do read it in their voice I hear it in their voice and it's hard not to especially with someone like Charles Bukowski because he had a very distinctive voice and I suppose in the same way if you were to um, read you know if you had a transcript of this session this recording and if you've been listening to me for a while you know, I know some people have been listening to me you know since 2006 uh, online and if you read it you'd, you might end up reading it and sort of hearing my voice as you read it it's uh, kind of I do that as well if, if I was going to read something by Kenneth Williams for example uh, or John Major who used to be Prime Minister here it's I do recognise voices I'm sure maybe everyone does I don't know but I'm not comparing myself to those that do but, or to Kenneth Williams, but I, I just sometimes I hear a voice and I recognize it. It might be maybe uh, a voice on an, maybe a film, an animated film. And I, did, I don't know who's in the film, I don't know the voices. And I, oh, I know that voice. So I do got an ear for voices I know when I used to work in sales in insurance and people didn't believe me um, but not that I worked in sales because I said an accident of course they believe me but that I'd, I used to say to people you know what sometimes I get a phone call from somebody and I recognise them I recognise their voice 
and I've sp I haven't spoken to him for maybe a month or two months or you know and I said no 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 I didn't believe it but I actually it's true sometimes I would remember the person so someone would call up and I said oh and I'd remind them of something that we spoke about so maybe I said oh you collect, you collect hats, don't you? You collect, collect hats, and sometimes it's say, oh, how do you remember? I said, yeah. Oh, you used to. You lost, lost all your money in Vegas, didn't you? You know, it's probably not something to remind someone of, but you know, it's it's. I don't know why, it's about voices, it triggers. So like when I was a counsellor, I didn't need to remember their voice because they were sitting in front of me. But I didn't need to check people's notes, the like from previous sessions, because as soon as they sat down and started talking, everything that they'd previously said came back to me it's like it was uh, it was all kind of sealed away and then it was available for me and I was I remembered without having to look at what was previously said even though we kept notes and generally of what not everything that was said but just a, a general uh, outline of the session And I quite like that. It's, I don't know how useful it is. Another thing I've noticed is I notice when people are lying to me. Because when someone tells me a lie, it, not so much if it's the first time they've lied and I don't know, but when someone uh, says something that is different to what they previously said to me, even if it was a year ago. It triggers the memory. And I remember, it's, it's like the, it's a bit like, you know, the, the game operation, it's like that, it's like the buzzer goes off. And it's like, oh, it's a little fib there. But it's not always lies sometimes, you know, I know sometimes it's just, uh, the memory, you know, or exaggeration. I try not to exaggerate. If I do exaggerate, or I do like to make things up, but I generally tell people that I've made it up so that it's not a lie. So sometimes I'll, I'll exaggerate and I'll think, oh, wait a minute. And I'll say, oh, sorry, I didn't really climb Mount Everest. I made it up and I just and I just you know I have to I correct it because I don't I don't want to I don't want to sort of be known as a liar really I'm not it's not really my thing I don't I think it's quite nice to not always tell the truth because there are times when that's not always the greatest idea especially if uh, Someone's asking you to judge them on their appearance. And, you know, I try to avoid those situations. Because I don't like to lie. But at the same time, I don't want to say anything that upsets people. So, I remember my sister, who was at my brother's wedding, and my sister was wearing a dress or something and I was unfortunately wearing a, a suit which I could never really never see the point of that but so she's 
my sister was like, I remember it actually because I went through this room and it's like it's got a table and chairs but I don't think they really use it that much maybe they do I'm just not when I'm there but then I'm not there that often so how would I know they have sometimes used it when I'm there so I have eaten at that table Yeah, not for a while though. It usually just seems to be envelopes, like letters, and it's the way they just put their letters. But anyway, I, I walked through there into the kitchen, and my sister was there with a dress on. And she says, How do I look? And I, I said, I don't care. And I just, I just like, well, because I don't. I just like, how do you look? I find it hard to do the fake, oh, you look lovely, you look beautiful, you look the, there's never been a more beautiful dress in the whole world. Because I don't, didn't feel that, and I don't, and it'd be fake to say it. So it's like, well, yeah. Just look like you're wearing a dress. And she looked fine. This just I struggle with that. <laughs> it's I should have just. It wasn't me being horrible. I just I just didn't didn't care how she looked. She's she's my sister, you know. I care about her anyway. I don't it wouldn't bother me if she was wearing a a seagull on her head. You know, this she's just doesn't make any difference to me. And I've been out even when I was at, yeah, I've been out with friends, and I've, most of my friends are women, or have been over the years. Um, I get on generally much more with women than with men. And I think it's because I'm probably, maybe I'm just very feminine, I don't know. Uh, maybe I look feminine. And so I've in, in the past, I've had a lot of uh, female friends. And sometimes we'd go out for a meal or go out to the pub with them and I'd be the only man. And I remember on a few occasions, they were like paying so many compliments to each other oh you look so beautiful you look so beautiful and like doesn't she look beautiful Jason and I'd say oh, I don't care what do I care if she looks beautiful or not it doesn't make any difference to me how you look you're my friend I'm not I don't judge you on how you look it doesn't affect me at all it doesn't I've got no interest in that in the same way I wouldn't say anything horrible either I wouldn't you know, I wouldn't sort of say, well, actually, you look fine, but your eyebrows could have done with a bit more work. I, I'm not going to say stuff like that because I'm not an expert on eyebrows. And it's, you know, I don't want anyone to be upset. But on the same side, I don't do the over-enthusiastic falseness of, uh, wow, you look like a princess. That's amazing. If I start doing that, I know that if eventually it'd get boring for the person if I was like that all the time with them. Oh, you look amazing. I can't believe it. You're dressed up and that beautiful. You, just, you look so great. It's like, Jason, shut up. We're at a funeral. Like, you know, I, I know that it could be over the top sometimes. And, uh, you know, oh, your makeup's wonderful. It's like you could be a professional makeup um, uh, designer. You could like I'm um, a professional makeup artist. Jason, I'm trying to do the poo. I'm on the toilet. Leave me alone. Uh, it's, it's just this is kind of just one of those. I'm not bothered to how other people look. It doesn't really affect me. It doesn't interest me. 
if you're walking down the street, whatever you're wearing, it's, it doesn't matter. I don't see, there seems to be this big thing about how people look. And the only person I'm interested in how they look is someone that I want to be intimate with. Or, you know, that'd be the only person that I would be interested in how they look. Anyone else, it doesn't matter, matter really. And does, does that, that's, that's how I, that's how I seem to be. And I'll give you a, oh, this is a little story. And I was about, I don't know the month. But it was 1991. And this person I was working with, he was actually the other side of the room. It's a big, big room. And he was working on one of the machines. I was working on another machine. And he kept shouting insults to me. And he was quite a lot older than me. He was probably in his 40s. Probably heading towards 50. And I was like 21. And he kept hurling things about my appearance and it wasn't flattering it was quite very unnecessary and something that I imagine he wouldn't have done had we not been in a, a safe work environment so he and he kept doing it and I couldn't quite work out why so this is the clean version I said to him, do you want to make love to me? And he said, well, I'll give you the clean version of what he said, uh, basically no. I said, in that case, why do you care what I look like? And he did look quite puzzled. I think I made a fair point. That it really doesn't matter. The only, and even then it might not matter. But that's the only reason it could ever matter really. How someone looks is if you're going to be kissing them. Other than that, I say kissing, but you know, other than that perhaps holding hands, stroking their fingers, I don't know, whatever young people do these days. Got flies in here today. Flies are everywhere. That's why I cleaned the carpet, or part of it. It's like a patch test, really. I clean part of the carpet. If the flies don't go, then I'll clean more of it, but if the flies leave, then I'll just leave the rest of the carpet dirty. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm going to do a bit of carpet every day. Sometimes doing a little bit, a little bit every day, actually leads to something being completed. Sometimes it doesn't. So. I I kind of move towards self-help books in 90 it wasn't really 97 because I was into them a little bit probably 95 so from 92 to 95 I had quite a nice collection of books poetry, philosophy some psychology stuff, um, Buddhism, Zen, Taoism, you know, so it's only quite, um, for me it's all kind of the same kind of stuff, so if emotional, um, thinking about stuff, maybe being able to step back and maybe analyze, maybe a bit of analysis, a bit of uh, a 
observing myself. Something that I couldn't really do when I was around other people, but I can do when I'm on my own. Very much, even when I was younger, I used to be a bit full on, sometimes, and didn't seem, didn't, I couldn't seem to control what I said. And I was always pulling myself up and telling myself off. But I kept, I seemed to keep going back, reverting back to that behavior. And, you know, when I was on my own though, when I was at home, I was able to be reflective and a lot calmer. And in a way, I, I preferred that side of me. Sometimes. So I had this book collection and I lost it. I've lost my book collections quite a few times over the years, uh, not just through, because I've moved around so much, I've ended up living in tiny little rooms. Sometimes I've left books in the rooms when I've left, when I've left, you know, I've moved out and I've left stuff there. Sometimes I've asked someone to look after something and then I've lost the stuff or uh, lost contact with that person. Other times I have um, an itchy armpit, that's lovely, isn't it? Or sometimes I I remember in 1995, I was putting my all my belongings into black bags, including my books, and I had I always seemed to buy quite expensive books because uh, they were I say expensive, but you know I'm thinking back in ninety in the nineties, ninety three, ninety four, I was spending sometimes. 30, 20, 20, 30 pound for a book um, because they were quite rare. Some of the quite rare books, rare as in unpopular, I suppose. There wasn't many are available. And Foils used to be a book in, in London, bookstore. It's, I think it's still there. Uh, it's a bit more up to date now, but at the time it was, there was books that had been on the shelves for probably 30, 40 years. So, you know, and there's the, the price was in pencil on the inside sleeve. Uh, so I used to collect them. Not the inside sleeves, but the, the books I used to collect. And they, you know, I, I was never interested in hypnosis at that time. In 97, I got interested in I needed actually self-help I needed help basically so self-help was really the one of the main options and it's probably possibly one of the best options in some ways because we have to want to help ourselves so as well as asking for help also you know I guess that's a cliche and it's also a hard thing to do as well sometimes is asking for help can be really difficult. Um, I find it less difficult now than I used to. That's why it took so long for me to get my own home. So I never asked for help before. I never, never sort of felt that I was, you know, it's never happened. But now, I don't mind asking so much. compared to how I used to be. That was a chair, by the way. It wasn't a squeaky fart. It was a chair. The chair. The only chair that I've got. I'm thinking of getting a different chair. I'm thinking of lots of things. Doesn't mean it's gonna happen. I decided what I really need is a Macintosh laptop. So is it a MacBook or something? I need to get 
they're too expensive, so I can't afford to buy one. But I need something that, and the only, the reason that everything I've got isn't for my pleasure, that's the thing. It's for, so I can make uh, better videos, better audios, better editing, but it's also the safety um, of Apple's products are safe. You know, like internet wise, I can't, I'm not gonna get hacked because I was recently had a hacking issue with my laptop and my email address and all that stuff. And the software, everything you get a Mac and everything's on there, the video editing and so I'd quite like to get something like that so that I can make nicer videos and um, yeah just I'd like to be able to do this forever not not just these let me bore you to sleep because I do I do also want to do the hypnosis stuff because I've got a, a passion for that it's a passion that is there it weighs sometimes weighs is that a real word it reduces at times um, but it keeps coming back it's still there and it's the only thing that's stuck with me as far as uh, an interest my whole life you know my whole life for the last 20 years anyway and it was January 1998 that I bought my first two hypnosis books and they were both introduction to hypnosis and they were both really really good books they still are really really good books one was green and one was blue and at that time I already had quite a quite a big book collection that I've been collecting since 2007, 2006. Uh, like Self-help books, brain mapping, uh, books on creativity. I was very interested in that and very much uh, yeah, I was interested reading some of the classics you know like uh, uh, the seagull was it jeremy something seagull and the alchemist and reading uh reading anthony robinson's anthony robbins books awaken the giant within and those huge books they were big old books they, they weren't big as in they were thick very many pages that's what I mean I'm not comparing myself to Anthony Robbins but they were big books and I started listening to his tapes and he was talking about NLP so I started you know I started getting interested in hypnosis in January 98 and all it is is I'd been looking at these books I've got a tendency sometimes especially if I go to a regular place I look at something and maybe it might take me a year before I buy it it might take me a few months it might take me a few weeks it might be the same day you know sometimes I look at something go away and then come back and sort of not not be sure if it's something that I want I mean the first computer I ever had I bought in about 90 98 99 and probably 98 I didn't touch it for a year I bought it and I thought what am I going to do with this I didn't have any internet. The internet wasn't really much was happening internet-wise at that time, so I didn't do anything. 
and then come about 99, 2000, the internet really sort of started to get popular. And then I started learning how to build websites and or web pages and then learn how to web, you know, build websites using the code HTML or HTM and then HTML and then but that was in 2000 so I just started using the computer when I had a reason to because you know, it's a tool to be used I'm not comparing myself to the computers but I'm just saying it's it's a tool to be used for me that that's how I felt about it and you know back then even when the internet did did start it took ages just for one picture to to appear on the screen it was all so slow and it was miraculous but it was a it was a slow miracle you know even the the most amazing magic trick you know, like David Copperfield. So you know, if he made didn't he make the Golden Golden Gate Bridge disappear or something? It was amazing. But if it had taken like three hours to happen, it would have been less amazing. You know, it's something. Uh, I'm not comparing myself to David Copperfield or the bridge, but. It's something about the internet was slow. It was really slow, and uh, I think it was quite weird because I'd see the picture on the screen, like a little picture. So I knew what the picture was going to be. So maybe it was a picture of Donald Duck, as an example, because those were the generally I imagine a lot of the pictures that people would download back then would have been Disney pictures. I'm sure that was probably the most popular kind of pictures that people would download and want to look at on the internet. So, but I'd be like in, in anticipation of the picture, even though I knew it was gonna be Donald Duck. And then when Donald Duck appeared on the screen with his little hat, little rucksack, you know, holding, whatever he was holding and I'd, I'm not comparing myself to Donald Duck I'm just saying his take could just be so slow to come up and I'd be surprised because I'd forgotten what it was that what picture was coming up it's you know it's, it's amazing but anyway I got into hypnosis I bought these books and didn't read them straight away. I'll be honest with you, I didn't read them straight away. But I was intrigued. I was intrigued. But not intrigued enough to commit to reading them. Because I, you know, I always thought, oh, hypnosis, it's the stuff you see on television, Paul McKenna on, on stage. Um, telling people what to do and you know all that stuff and I'm not comparing myself to Paul McKenna I'm just saying that I used to I wasn't really sure about it but I think some people still have that idea about maybe hypnosis being like stage hypnosis and I remember my, my friend gave me a leaflet and he said and it was a leaflet for NLP training so neuro linguistic programming and I thought oh but then I saw the price of it and I was like oh and I thought, well, maybe, you know, Christmas is coming up. Do a few extra shifts. Maybe I can get the money together. And I thought, hmm. 
So what I did is I booked it, it was a practitioner. No, no, that's not how it happened. No, this was for a, an NLP course and I didn't go on this one. But then I started going online to find out about NLP, bought some books, that's it. So this was 98 and in and then I went on a course and it was uh, at the University London University or City University that's it the City University in East London and I went there and did an evening course the introduction to NLP I went along I really liked it. I think it was on a Tuesday evening. Or it might have been on a Thursday evening. Or it might be both. Because there was, there was three terms. So maybe one of the terms was on a Tuesday evening. And the other term was on a Thursday evening. Or the other term, the first one might have been a Thursday. The second on a Tuesday. I'm not comparing myself to a Tuesday evening. I'm just saying that it's it was a real it was an interesting thing because I went there with some knowledge and you know, I also learned stuff as well. And it may I got because with NLP hypnosis is part of it. It's 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 a collection of different ideas that came together to form that particular uh, thing called NLP. So hypnosis, family therapy and uh, linguistics kind of came together to form and maybe gestalt therapy as well, to be fair, and a few other bits to form this NLP. and. After doing the, the City University course, a long, long time ago, 10, 20 years ago, I started, I did the practitioner in NLP in 1999. And then I went on to do the master practitioner in NLP. And then I did, did a hypnosis course, so hypnosis training. Continue to buy books, collect books. I travel all over the place, all over London to specialist bookshops to buy. Because quite often, hypnosis books would just be on the shelf and be left there and they wouldn't be touched. Because they were, some of them were very academic, not really. Not for the average Harry Potter reader, you know they're not they're not not very fantasy. Uh, it's not that kind of pleasurable reading that you'd get with Harry Potter, or yeah, it's very. I like. I prefer academic -y reads, not because I'm an academic. It's just. I like things to just be plain and to the point and like reading wise. Um, a bit like me, I'm not comparing myself to me, but I, I like to, you know, I like to just get straight to the point, as you probably noticed listening to me. You know, I don't, I don't like to beat around the bush. I just like to, you know, get. So that's what the kind of books I like to read, things where I can learn something from, something where I could just improve my knowledge about a specific thing. Uh, that the specific thing being hypnosis. So I bought lots of books, lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of books, read lots and lots and lots and lots of books. 
I did quite a few different trainings actually over the time. And I never I never felt the confidence to do hypnosis with somebody, you know. I did see a few people, I did do hypnosis with people. Uh, fam, you know, a few people, not a lot. And it wasn't really till 2004 when I really had that itch that I just wanted to just get out there and see what I could do. So I had the knowledge, I had, I had some experience, but it's more knowledge based, it's more academic in a sense. Uh, I'd also watched lots of videos, DVDs therapists uh, you know people doing hypnosis and NLP and you know listen to audios listen to lectures you know lots of stuff like that so 2004 I launched my free pain relief service where I was living and I got no interest at all but I did do some hypnosis with a few people that I knew for relaxation mainly. And then in 95, I went on another hypnosis course. But this, after that, I felt more confident within myself to just get out there and do it. So I relaunched my free hypnosis pain relief in 2006. And for some reason it took off and I was getting people seeing people every week and it was going really well going really well uh, I started working doing hypnosis at two charities uh, one was a alcohol charity one was a rehab for drugs and alcohol and I used to do group sessions so lead we used to lead relaxation sessions for both of these different charities as well as the other, one of them I used to do hypnosis with the people uh, doing different things like hypno helping them with confidence, with relaxation, with uh, the, you know, the addictions and whatever. So I used to do th different things there as well. And then 2006 I started putting my MP3s onto the internet and I started making videos and here I am 12 years later making another video so that's kind of the end really I think of this particular session I watch, I'm going to watch some television I think don't really know what's on it's Wednesday night so this has been let me bore you to sleep number or whatever I hope that the volume has been ok because this microphone is That's what it's about 14 inches away from my mouth. So oh, there's another fly there. So it's not too far away from my mouth. My mouth, hopefully, it's been listenable to listenable-ish. I'm going to try and get some a thing off Amazon, which the microphone plugs in, and I should be able to should work okay but if this works I might not need to anyway but I'm never going to be shouting you know I never it's always going to be softly spoken because that's how I talk unless we were in a field and you were the other side of the field then I'd have to talk louder but I don't like talking loudly I like, I like talking softly you know it's just what feels comfortable to me.
bit chilly now as well. I'm going to turn the heating on. So I'm going to go thank you again to everyone. Um, especially to those of you that left me a message yesterday. Or you know, that I replied to. And to the last few days. It's been really, really lovely. Thank you. I do appreciate that because I feel like I need to know that what I'm doing is useful. You know, it might sound silly, but I don't. I'm not doing this because I'm bored. There are other things I could be doing. You know, I could be playing with Lego or. building sandcastles, I don't know, it's something, I'm not comparing myself to a sandcastle, I'm just saying, I could be doing other things, I'm doing this with the intention of doing something useful to help other people, to help you, and, and I know that some people maybe would watch this and listen to this and think, what the heck, you're just talking about yourself, and it's just, why, 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 you, you may even be holding a flower pot, saying why, the thing is, there's a reason to it, and those, it's just about boredom, it's about just drifting away, and having that safety, to just let go, and sometimes it can be a comforting thing, can be, you know, there are people that don't get to speak to anybody, don't get to hear anybody's voice, and as I said earlier, because I do regular sessions, it's the same voice, but I'm saying different things each time, so it's not just the same thing all the time, although it is partly. So I'm going to go now. Thank you very much for watching and for listening. Please leave a beautiful comment. And please like and uh, subscribe if you wanted to subscribe. And I shall probably make another session very, very soon. Bye-bye. Lots of love.